well. With me right now is Janie Durrell. She is on United Board. She's the first vice president, and also Kurt Weeman. He is the alterations manager here in the village. Welcome to the both of you today. Thank you. Thank you. And nice to be here. Yeah, great to have you on. And recently, there's been a lot of talk about when the contractors come in, looking at a, a deposit for them. And as we know, as we've heard, uh, you know, sometimes the contractors aren't don't take care of the area as quite as we'd like them to do, or perhaps uh, take some of their debris and instead of hauling it away with them, put it in the trash bins. So this is a step to maybe alleviate that. And now I understand that there's a new conformance deposit that is coming up, right, Janie? That's true. And with United, also third boards, we have approved a one-year pilot program for the collection of a refundable $250 conformance deposit for the standard mutual consent and, va and variance requests. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would like to come in and do a request for a variance or an alteration, as we call them, uh, they do have to, as a member, do the refundable $250 conformance deposit, which is then after completion of the project, then mm -hmm. it is refundable if there are no fines. Okay, so what is the, the, the purpose of this? Is it kind of what I sort of said to maybe alleviate some of the, the problems? Absolutely. We have uh, contractors that come in and their workmen, mm -hmm. and they park in the wrong area of parking. They need to go out of the cul-de-sacs and mm -hmm. park on the streets. They also uh, put a lot of their debris from the, when they uh, do a demolish of a project okay. in the dumpsters. And um, that's they, the big issue, one of the big that issues. That is, yes. that is, especially <laughs> asbestos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Kurt, um, is this for any project? Does it have to be over a certain amount? And who's the one responsible? Is it the man or owner? or the contractor to come in and start the process? The uh, process can be started by either the contractor okay. or the manor owner. Generally, mm -hmm. the uh, contractor does it on the bigger projects. The mm -hmm. conformance deposit is only required mm -hmm. on projects over $500, okay. which is the majority of the projects yeah, we get. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and the, like Janie said, the purpose of this, it's, it's two or th actually threefold, this process, this conformance deposit is one, it's to try to enforce the rules that we have, the policies, such as dumping in dumpsters. Uh, and one of the other issues that we're hoping to solve with it is getting final sign-offs on alterations. What's happened mm -hmm. in the past is um, people will complete their alteration and never call for an inspection. Okay. We have some that are two or three years old that have, people have never called in on. So this deposit gives them a $250 incentive to get our inspectors out there and take a look at their work. Okay, so is it the resident that puts the $250? I should say, is it on them? The, the contractor might put it out, but it's the resident that is the one that you would come back to if they did not get the inspection. Correct. Okay. What, the, the way the mutual works is uh, we only have a contract with the member. So it doesn't really matter who actually pays the money. Okay. Everything is tied to the member and to the manor. So any balance that's left of the deposit would go okay. back to the member. All right, let me ask you a question, because Janie, you just brought this up about asbestos. A lot of regulations when it comes to getting rid of asbestos. And uh, has that become an issue of contractors who don't handle that properly? Because there are state regulations, correct? Yes, it's, it's a big issue. And this is where, like Janie said, we have people putting it in dumpsters. Yeah. And not only is that illegal, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. We have to bring in a special contractor <clears throat> to come and clean out the entire dumpster. And there's a cost involved in that. So this $250 doesn't quite cover that, but it helps us to fray some of those costs. And then we go after the member for the balance. Okay. One of the things that our committee is working on is a handout possibly to our members mm -hmm. and the contractors <clears throat> exactly what is expected, what kind of a... Uh, tests that you must have before you get started on your project at, that deals with asbestos and also lead ba the lead-based paint. Okay. So we are working on that so we have our members really understand what the rules, and these are federal regulations, they are. not just yes. ours. Yeah, and I understand uh, the people who handle this, the contractors, 
uh, I think there's some sort of a certification or a test or something, uh, not by here, but in general in the world of contracting that they need to, they need to show or have. Right? right, there is asbestos certification yeah. required. And one of the other issues that goes along with the final uh, inspection is once there's demolition done in one of our units because mm -hmm. of the asbestos content, we need to, the law requires a clearance test afterwards that we okay. go in and someone needs to go in and test the unit to make sure that there's no asbestos. Asbestos is friable. In other words, it floats in the air. Yeah. So yeah. we have to test the air to make sure that the <coughs> unit is clear. And what a lot of people don't understand is if you don't get that clearance, VMS staff can't come into your unit. Once there is a demolition permit okay. taken out, a, a flag is put on the unit. So nobody can go, a plumber can't come in and fix your toilet, someone can't come in and fix your lights, no one can come in and enter your unit again until we get that clearance. Okay. So it's very important that people do get that clearance and do get the final sign off so that they can get work done in their unit. Right. And that test yeah. is done through a lab also. So okay. a specimen is yeah. taken and then sent off to a lab also with the lead based paint. Okay, so I would assume that that test, that, that clearance is done if they're taking down the old kind of what we call popcorn ceilings or uh, removing lead and lead based paints uh, from years and years and years ago before a new drywall goes up or a new ceiling goes up or anything, is that when they come in to get that clearance? No, the clearance is generally done when the project is complete. <clears throat> okay, all right. There, um, it depends on how the contractor works his okay. job. Generally, if he's going to do demo, he will isolate the one room mm -hmm. where he's doing it <clears throat> so you can continue to live. And before they remove that isolation, so they can keep okay. that isolation up for the entire project or if they want to take it down and do other work, it's before that isolation is removed that they must have the testing done. Okay, what about a cost for the contractor to come in here? Is there a daily pass that they have to pay for? How does that work? We have a contractor's work pass policy, and it was set forth with guidelines for registration of construction contractors. And those are the contractors that come in and do the work, mm -hmm. and that is provided through our uh, compliance that we have, okay. and it, it's part of the $250 uh, fee that they pay. And then if there's other, let's say the contractor has a couple of workers or whatever, they also must have a special pass, and that pass is, uh, runs just about $15. Okay. And after the project is done, then those passes are more or less canceled. And I'm not sure, are they turned back into the department at that time, down into after, permits? After the six months, we can electronically void them. Oh, okay. okay. So um, we try to get them back when we um, get, give the deposit back, but because they are just a paper slip, it's not 100% necessary to retrieve it. They are barcoded, okay. and we, we will cancel them after the six months. Okay, and I understand you, there's a new pamphlet here that talks about yes. some of this, am I right? Yes, it, it's a here, great pamphlet it that uh, was put together with Kurt and his staff along with our committee and it's really a great guideline for any member that is thinking about doing alterations. They can pick yeah. that up in the permit department down in the community center. Okay, and Kurt, can this be found online if uh, people are looking at coming a project or something they can even show a contractor. Yes, that's all okay. it is available online. It's in the alterations section which okay. is under the resident services section. Okay, so that's good. If you know if you got a project you know coming up, uh, you can have your own contractor read that which would be great. I mean, you should do that so they know exactly what to do. I imagine there are a lot of contractors who work in this community often who just are by the book, who do things right. But there are some who maybe come in and maybe they do good work, but they don't know the nuances of this community or what, what some of the, uh, of the guidelines are. And, that's and our policies also are updated quite often. Yeah. So they, not, they must go ahead and try to keep on top of our new policy so everybody works together. Like the January 1st yeah. policy was that you cannot have any of your construction vehicles in our cul-de-sacs. You can drop off all your material, mm -hmm. uh, your tools and everything, and then you have to park out on our streets, not in oh, the cul-de-sacs okay. and not in our parking spots. Okay, all right, so that's good to know. Uh, great uh, that you've come out with this, and I think it's an important message to get out. And whether you live in United or Third, because the guidelines are very similar for Third? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, you know, if you're having a project coming up, 
you got to do it the right way. And it really, it starts with, um, you know, making sure you get the right permits. That's the start. And, and be sure that Especially you if turn it's an alteration. at yeah. the end of your project when it's completed and signed off by the city, your permit, please bring that back into okay. the department so you can get your, com your compliance, or excuse me, I call it compliance, but your, um, I, I, I'm lost here. Uh, um, the, uh, the conformance. Thank the you, positive. the conformance yeah. feedback yeah. also. It's very important or you're not going to get your refund back at all without turning in the final permit from the city. All right, very good. Kurt, yes? What, what are the note on yeah. permits? Yeah. Um, we would like to get the message out that when someone does have a permit, they're required to post it in their front window. So okay. if you see someone working and there's not a permit in the front window, please give us a call. We have a lot of work that goes on without permits, and okay. we need the eyes and ears of the community to help us catch these people. All right, very good. Great to have you on, Janie. Always Thank good you. to see you. Thank, Thank you. you, Kurt. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, you can go online and find out more about this. And where can they get the pamphlet if they need this? Uh, window 7 downstairs in okay. Resident Services. You heard it from Kurt. Window 7. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll be right back. Yeah.